Paz de Cristo, hermanos, Iglesia de Sion, en esta mañana estamos felices por el privilegio de ser hecho, hechos hijos de Dios. David decía, y yo me alegré con los que me decían, a la casa de Jehová iremos. Y también el Señor Jesucristo dijo, donde estén dos o tres congregados en mi nombre, ahí estoy yo. Entonces, en donde quiera que usted se encuentre, ¿Verdad? Uh, mientras estemos congregados en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo, ahí está Él. En esta mañana venimos una vez más ante ustedes, esperando que cada uno de ustedes, sus familias, sus hijos, todos se encuentren gozando de la misericordia de Dios. A este momento voy a pedirles que cierren sus ojos, inclinen sus, sus rostros y vamos a ir ante la presencia de Dios para que nos bendiga, nos ayude y que todo lo que se haga en este culto, hermanos, sea de, para edificación y para la gloria de Dios. Oremos, Señor Padre Santísimo, Jehová de los ejércitos, en esta mañana nos presentamos a ti buscando de tu gloria, de tu misericordia, de tu favor divino. Señor, aleluya, necesitamos tu ayuda y tu presencia. Envíanos, Señor, aleluya, tu Santo Espíritu y sobre todo que tu palabra corra con libertad, aleluya, que tú bendiga los corazones, los oídos de todas las personas, Señor, que van a oír estas alabanzas, estas predicaciones, Señor, pero sobre todo que tú seas alabado, glorificado y ensalzado en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén, amén. A esta hora vamos a recibir a la hermana Chenea Mafei que va a cantar una hermosa alabanza para la gloria de Dios.
Dios bendiga a nuestra hermana general por esta hermosa alabanza. Hermanos, y también quiero tomarme el tiempo para agradecer a mis sobrinos, a la hermana Narly y el hermano Caleb, que nos han ayudado de una manera maravillosa para la producción, la transmisión de estos mensajes. I want to take the time to really uh, uh, be grateful to Sister Natalie and Brother Caleb. They've been a blessing in, in the transmission, the production of these, of these services every Sunday. Hermanos, uh, quiero dejarles un mensaje acerca del Consolador. El Señor Jesucristo uh, les dice, ¿verdad?, uh, en, el, el leyendo en, en Juan 14, 16, Y yo ragaré al Padre y os dará otro Consolador para que esté con vosotros para siempre. Una de las cosas que, se, que le preocupaba al Señor Jesucristo es que cuando Él partiera de esta tierra, ¿Verdad? ¿De qué iba a pasar con sus discípulos? Y por eso Él les, les, les enseña, les muestra, les revela, ¿verdad? De que Él realmente no se iba a ir a dejarlos, sino que Él regresaría, ¿verdad? En forma del Espíritu Santo o en forma del Consolador. Una de las cosas que miramos en la Biblia, es que antes de que Israel saliera a la guerra, el Señor le explicó a Israel y le dijo, cuando salgas a la guerra contra tus enemigos, si vieres caballos y carros y un pueblo más grande que tú, no tengas temor de ellos, porque Jehová tu Dios está contigo, el cual te sacó de la tierra de Egipto. En otras palabras, lo que Dios le está tratando de explicar a Israel es de que Israel no debiera o no debería de mirar, ¿verdad?, a los carros de, de, ¿verdad? de guerra, los caballos, ¿verdad?, formidables, ¿verdad?, la fuerza de sus enemigos, sino que ellos deberían siempre de confiar en el poder de Dios, en el poder de Dios, porque únicamente a través del poder de Dios, ellos obtendrían la victoria. En esta mañana, hermanos, hermosa iglesia de Sion, el mensaje de Dios para nosotros es, no confíen en sus propias fuerzas. Yo sé que la situación es difícil, pero ustedes deben de confiar en mí, porque yo soy el Dios Todopoderoso, que los va a bendecir, los va a ayudar y últimamente les va a dar la victoria. Entonces el Señor Jesucristo, antes de ser arrestado para morir por la humanidad, Él tiene una plática muy íntima con sus discípulos y sus palabras son conmovedoras y muy consoladoras. Y les habla de tres cosas, les habla de la paz, de un lugar y una promesa. Y les empieza diciéndoles, no se turbe vuestro corazón, a pesar de que este mundo, en este mundo tendréis aflicción, pero confiad, yo he vencido al mundo, y estas cosas os he hablado para que en mí tengáis paz. Una de las cosas que nosotros, los hijos de Dios, algo que habita en nosotros, algo que está en nosotros, es la paz. Esa paz que habita en nosotros, hermanos, nos da la calma, nos da el sosiego, nos da la serenidad para ver las cosas de una manera, ¿verdad?, más clara. ¿Y por qué tenemos paz? Porque sabemos que Dios está con nosotros. Al Señor sea la gloria. Y por eso en el mundo ahorita, hermanos, hay... La, la gente, ¿verdad? No sabe qué hacer. No, no tienen, ¿verdad? No tienen sosiego. No encuentran la puerta porque no tienen a Dios en su corazón. Iglesia de Sion, este es el momer, mejor momento para que usted hable a la gente y le diga, les diga que usted tiene paz porque usted tiene a Dios en su corazón. Esa es la diferencia que hace entre nosotros a los del mundo. 
Ahora, ¿cómo se iba a lograr que los discípulos tuvieran paz? Esto se iba a llevar a cabo a través del Consolador. El Señor tendría que partir y ese, en su lugar iba a venir el Consolador. Y Jesús les dice, os conviene que yo me vaya, porque si no me fuera, el Consolador no vendrá a vosotros, mas si me fuere, os lo enviaré. Ahora, ¿quién es el Consolador? El Consolador es Jesucristo mismo, porque Él dijo, no os dejaré huérfanos, vendré a vosotros. El Consolador es también el Espíritu Santo. Entonces, el Consolador es Jesús, el Espíritu Santo, y es otra manifestación del mismo Dios Todopoderoso. Ahora, la palabra Consolador viene de la raíz griega paracletos, que significa uno que está llamado para estar a nuestro lado. Hermanos, el Consolador, o sea, el Espíritu Santo, Él nos ayuda, nos anima, nos consuela y nos aconseja. Y también significa con fuerza. El Espíritu Santo viene a nosotros cuando tenemos necesidad de esa fuerza poderosa, de esa fuerza que viene de parte de Dios, la cual nos asiste para que seamos vencedores en medio de nuestras debilidades y pruebas. Al Señor sea la honra y la gloria. Y por eso el Señor dijo, recibiréis poder cuando vaya venido sobre vosotros el Espíritu Santo. Esta vida, hermanos, es una jornada. Y esta jornada está llena de vicisitudes, problemas, retos, dificultades, aflicciones, turbulencias, enfermedades, conflictos. Y para eso necesitamos el poder de Dios. Ese poder de Dios se ejecuta a través del Consolador, que es el Espíritu Santo, porque nuestras fuerzas humanas nunca serán suficientes para contrarrestar los estragos de este mundo atroz. Y por eso David, hermanos, a través del Espíritu Santo, él escribe el Salmo 23 para nuestro beneficio cuando estuviéramos en situaciones difíciles, difíciles, él hace una similitud entre las necesidades de los animalitos, ovejas, del rebaño con la iglesia del Señor. Y hablando de la providencia divina, en el Salmo 23, 2 dice, junto a aguas de reposo me pastoreará. Estas son aguas de descanso y refrigerio no corrientes de aguas turbulentas que tal vez asustarían a las ovejas. Dios es el único que nos puede proveer la paz y la tranquilidad. Y por eso Jesús dijo, estas cosas os he hablado para que en mí tengáis paz. En el mundo tendréis aflicción, pero confiad, yo he vencido al mundo. El apóstol Pablo en su carta a los filipenses le dice, y la paz de Dios que sobrepasa todo entendimiento guardará, o sea, cuidará, protegerá y vigilará vuestros corazones y vuestros pensamientos en Cristo Jesús. Esto significa que el Espíritu Santo a través de la paz de Dios protegerá nuestras mentes para que no se trastorne cuando vengan las aflicciones, las luchas y las pruebas. Porque la batalla está en nuestras mentes. El enemigo se va a esforzar para poner en nosotros pensamientos negativos, pensamientos, hermanos, de derrota. Pero el Señor Jesucristo, su palabra dice que la paz de Dios, su paz, sobrepasa todo entendimiento y su paz hermanos va a proteger nuestras mentes el Espíritu Santo a través de la paz protegerá nuestra mente para que no se trastorne cuando vengan las aflicciones las luchas y las pruebas estos son tiempos difíciles 
¿verdad? Y todos estamos pasando por algo difícil. Yo a veces le digo a mi esposa que me siento como, como un león enjaulado, ¿verdad? Ahí en los zoológicos miramos cómo los leones caminan de un lado para otro y del otro para, para atrás y, y así a veces me siento yo, pero cuando busco a Dios en oración, siento el Consolador, siento el Espíritu Santo que me trae paz, me da el sosiego, hermanos, y me da la tranquilidad. Entonces, llegarán a nuestras vidas circunstancias difíciles en las cuales nuestras palabras parecerán vacías e inútiles. No podemos verbalizar lo que sentimos en nuestros corazones y pareciera que nuestras expresiones son insuficientes e inefectivas. ¿Qué podemos hacer cuando esto pasa? Debemos de orar a Dios fervientemente. Iglesia de Sion, si hubo un tiempo en el cual la iglesia debe de orar, es hoy. Por eso estamos Estamos teniendo esa cadena de oración cada fin de semana. Son 24 horas que gran número de hermanos están, estamos orando, ¿verdad? Y yo les invito a los, a los demás hermanos que no se han apuntado en la cadena de oración, hermanos, vamos a unirnos, vamos a orar, vamos a clamar a Dios, pero vamos a hacerlo de una manera ferviente. Aleluya, si se hinca para orar y se empieza a dormir, párese, levante las manos, alabe a Dios. Aleluya, recite a Salmo 23, a Salmo 1, a Salmo 8, a Salmo 91, alabe a Dios. Y el Consolador vendrá y lo consolará. Al Señor sea la honra y la gloria. Entonces, Aquí es cuando estamos pasando, hermanos, por intranquilidad y preocupación. Aquí es cuando el Consolador, o sea, el Espíritu Santo, toma estos pensamientos, emociones y frustraciones inarticuladas a Dios. Pero el Espíritu Santo descubre nuestros corazones a Dios, intercediendo por nosotros según la voluntad de Dios. Esto causa a nosotros paz y seguridad. Les invito a que cierren sus ojos y vamos a orar. Señor Padre Celestial, a esta hora, Señor, te damos gracias por tu palabra, porque tu palabra, se dio, Señor, nos da la paz, nos da el Señor, aleluya, nos sentimos mejor, porque tu palabra es viva y eficaz. Y por eso tú dijiste, mis palabras que yo os he hablado son espíritu y son vida. Yo te pido, Señor, por toda la iglesia de Sion, por todos mis hermanos que tal, tal vez se sientan, Señor, aleluya, intranquilos. Tal vez se sientan, aleluya, llenos de estrés, de ansiedad por lo que está pasando en este mundo. Pero yo te pido, Señor, que el Espíritu Santo venga sobre ellos, Señor, aleluya, y les dé la paz, les dé el sosiego. Y sobre todo que les dé el gozo, aleluya, a través del Espíritu Santo, del Consolador, Señor, dale a tu iglesia, Señor, aleluya, aleluya, el confort, dales a ellos, Señor, lo que ellos necesitan y que levanten las cabezas, sus cabezas, Señor, y te alaben, te adoren, te ensalcen, Señor, porque a través de la alabanza, aleluya, tú habitas en medio de la alabanza de tu pueblo. Te pido que bendigas a los niños, los juniors, los jóvenes, las dorcas, los varones. Aleluya, aleluya, los matrimonios, las viudas, aleluya, las madres solteras, toda tu iglesia en general. También por las personas que están escuchando tu palabra, Señor, en los cultos, Señor, que estamos celebrando. Que tu palabra llegue, toque los corazones y que más de una persona se decida. Señor, entregar su vida a ti. Te pedimos también por el gobierno. Te pedimos, Señor, aleluya, por los trabajadores. Aleluya, que trabajan, Señor, al frente de la batalla. Las enfermeras, los enfermeros, los doctores, que tú los cuides, que tú los protejas. Señor, y también te pedimos que tú pongas los medios para que una vez más, Señor, las puertas 
de tu santuario se vuelvan a abrir y que tu iglesia venga a regocijarse Señor aleluya que tengamos fiesta en ese día te lo pedimos en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo amén Good morning everyone it's an honor to be before you once again and it's awesome to to hear the word of God spoken from our pastor and and also brother Leo who who helps out a lot as well It's beautiful to be here today with with uh, a few of my family members and, and knowing that you're you're here with us too in spirit. We're going to go ahead and open up our Bibles to the book of First Peter, chapter 1. It's wonderful uh, to hear of all the good things that are happening. Despite all of the challenges that we're facing, we were able to, to celebrate a couple of graduations yesterday, and it was beautiful to drive by celebrate what's being it's being called now it's um kind of amazing the way all this terminology is has changed over the last few years i remember in the 90s and the early 2000s a drive by was something that you ran from now it's something that you run to and before it was violence and now it's like cupcakes so it's different um but congratulations to Brian and congratulations to Priscilla who graduated And weren't able to walk, but we were able to share a little bit of joy with them yesterday outside and practicing social distancing in a responsible way for the most part. Right, Caleb, a little bit, kind of? Yeah, you guys did a good job. But congratulations to them and congratulations to all of the high school students as well. And you will all have your day uh, coming very soon. So First Peter chapter 1. And before we get started, I'll let you know that We're going to be speaking today about setting your hope in Jesus and believing on his promises. So setting your hope in Jesus and believing on his promises. And actually, we're going to go ahead and pray right now just to just to acknowledge the presence of the Lord once more. And we're going to ask him to speak through his word, which he will because he's faithful. Amen. Lord God, we come before him. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your salvation. We thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all of our friends and family that are, Lord, with us, united in one spirit, Lord, one accord. We ask you, Lord, that you speak through this word and that you would bless every person, Lord, that's able to follow along with us today. And even those that are working and aren't able, Lord, but, Lord Jesus, are, are seeking more of your presence and going through whatever challenges, Lord, they're experiencing. We ask you that you work in them as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is good. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Bibles, if we haven't already, to 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'll go ahead and get started. And we're going to read a few verses, so... Follow along with me the best as you can. The best you can. I know that um, know that it's probably a little easier for you to follow along because you probably have a couple devices in front of you at home. It might be an iPad or an iPhone computer, perhaps. But First Peter chapter one it says, "In all, in verse six, sorry, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that you, so that the the proven genuineness of your faith." of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. So we rejoice because even the bad things or the challenges or the dark things in our life will translate into glory and honor and praise to God because he sees us through every challenge. Amen. We're going to jump to verse 8. Though you have not seen him, You love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible, an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So Paul talks to us about what faith is, amen, and how it is things that we hope for, that we believe and we know in our spirit, but we haven't seen with our physical eyes And Peter is saying here that joy comes when we focus, when we believe and receive all the word of God and we put all of our trust on the faithful one who is our Lord. And I want to pause here for a second because when we look at the word of God, when we look at the Psalms, when we look at the complete word of God, the work and the word of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is one of the most wonderful signs of a saved person. 
And I understand that we have lots of challenges and we have lots of trials and we go through pains and we go through sufferings. But the one constant through this all is the faithfulness of God. And when we look at the faithfulness of God and we focus on who he is, when we focus on the finished work of the cross, we can rejoice knowing that he is with us and that he has already overcome, that he has already finished his work, and that if we are his children, we will reign with him one day and we will be with him and he's already with us. So the joy of the Lord is something that comes when we know who we are serving and we know who he is and we declare the name of Jesus every day of our lives and in every situation, we can give him glory and honor or you can seek him out and whatever, whatever comes your way, you can give glory to God. Salvation is a beautiful benefit. Of our, I'm sorry, joy is a beautiful benefit of our salvation. And I would ask you, person that's tuning in today with, with us today, do you have joy? In the moment of a, a difficult, difficult problem that comes your way or a challenge that comes your way, can you find a calmness in your spirit that allows you to focus on the joy of the Lord? The joy that doesn't depend on how much is in your account or what is going right with your work or what is going on in your home. Can you focus on on who he is, and give him glory and honor. Can you feel his joy? Well, if you can feel his joy, why don't you just thank him for just a moment and say, thank you for that joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, Lord God, for the rejoicing in my spirit. If you don't have that joy, then I'm going to ask you to stay afterwards, after this message, so we can pray for you and ask God to begin to sow the seeds of salvation in your life. There's a reason why you're watching today. There's a reason why you are hearing us, and we want you to know that God has a wonderful purpose for you, and he wants to take you with him into heaven. But before that, he wants to give you rest for your soul today. So we, we are able to fill the joy when we know who we are serving and we know who we are trusting in. And we're going to take a look at verse 9 one more time. For you are receiving the end result you are, receive, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And the Bible says, we continue to, in verse 13, it says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. You know, a lot of us have, have had to learn how to work through things. And I think we, we can all say that we have, right? So if you, for example, have a final exam you've got to get ready for or a final project you have to prepare for, in the moment that you're working through it, you're looking at the finished, at the finish line, right? Some of you that are graduating are, are we're probably thinking of yourselves walking up to the podium and posing for a picture. Or for some of you that are working hard, to, to just to get to the end of the week sometimes, you imagine yourself getting to the weekend and maybe celebrating with your fa family while you eat in and out or whatever you like to eat, right? But you're, you're, what you're doing is you're setting your mind on the things to come and the things that are ahead because you need that motivation. You need that clarity. In the moment of your situation, of, of whatever difficulty it is, in the moment of your stress, you don't focus on, on all the circumstances and perhaps a storm around you, you set your hope on something that's solid. Well, the best thing for us to do is, uh, Peter is telling us right here, he's saying that we are supposed to have an alert and fully sober mind. Alert, understanding what is going on. Alert in the spiritual realm. Alert and understanding the things that are going to come to pass, the things that are happening already, understanding that we have to know that our world is shifting around us. The spiritual world, we know that the Lord is God of everything, but the spiritual world might be making things happen very soon. We might be seeing crazy things happen in this world. The church might not be here very long. We don't know exactly, right? But we do know that God, is, his plan is unfolding before us, and we have to be alert, and we have to know that our king is going to come soon. And he says we have to be sober. 
and what what it means to me to be sober is to have have a mind that is that is that is 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 strengthened a mind that thinks clearly a mind that sees things for what they are and i think that if we are honest a, a few people or i could say a lot of people were probably spiritually a little asleep and not fully sober when this when this this all started to happen about 2 months ago you might have been at church thinking that that sunday was a regular sunday but a couple days passed by, and I remember it was on a Wednesday that the county said that we couldn't come to church anymore. And people were starting to ask me. People that hadn't really gone to life group in a while were asking me, Brother Stephen, are we still going to have life group today? I really wanted to go. I really wanted to go. I was planning on going. And it's amazing because I think that God was able to spark something in you. And I think that God was able to show you, son, daughter, I want you to understand that you can't put your trust in the world that you're living in. You can't put your trust in your job. You can't put your trust in your school. You can't put your trust in even any government, but you have to put your trust in me. Look at me. Be alert. Understand that the time in this life is very short, and now we are understanding that we can't hope on anything else, but we have to put our hope, as it says here in verse 13, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. We have to believe in him and believe on him more than anything else because he is our ultimate prize. Is Christ your ultimate prize today? Is Christ the one that you turn to in your moments of struggle, in your moments of anxiety and doubt? Is he the one that you turn to? Is he your ultimate prize? What is your ultimate prize today? Is it a paycheck? Is it a friend? Is it a, rela a relationship of some type? Because I believe that God is calling you to look to him as your ultimate prize. In verse 14, it says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you had lived in ignorance. But just as he who calls you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. And the word conform here, I, I know that we've heard it a lot and we've probably preached it a couple times. But the word conform means to comply with rules, standards, or laws, to be similar or identical as others, to be in agreement or harmony, to act in accordance with prevailing standards or customs. So the Bible is saying we cannot comply to the way that others live. You can be maybe in a relationship or you could know someone or you could work with people, you could look at things on TV, you could look at things online and there could be voices in your head, there could be urges that you are feeling that are not sent from God and God is telling you to use this time to give to him a holy sacrifice, to practice holiness. And what do we mean by that? We're not saying that we have to prove our perfection to him, but hear the word of God Peter is telling us that we have to practice holiness. God is calling you now in these last days before he comes for his church to step away from the things that God has is trying to call you out of. Step away out of disobedience. Step away from lust. Step away from the images that are, are coming across from your phone, from the internet, from whatever it is. But come closer to God and stop looking at the things that are trying to cause you fear and anxiety anxiety and doubt and, and hatred. Step away from those things and come close to God and say, God, I just want to hope in you. I just want to trust in you. I just need your joy. I just need your peace. And, and let, let God know how much you love him. There's nothing, there's nothing more beautiful than when a, a young person or any believer says, God, I love you. I want to serve you the best that I can. And, and Peter here is telling us that we do these things, we should set our hope on him. Why? Because our God is good. We love him. Why? Because he loved us first and because it's the right thing to do. And Paul is, and sorry, Peter is telling us here that we do what? We live to please God. We don't live to go along with what our neighbors or our associates are doing or following along with. We don't live to be moved or to be pushed to anxiety by what the news is telling us. 
We don't live to begin worrying because we lose our jobs, but we live and to put our trust and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what's going to happen? We are going to lose our jobs sometimes. We are going to go through stress and anxiety, but all of this is just so that we can put our trust on in Him and set our sights on Him and say, God, I know you're not going to fail me. I know that you're not going to let me down. I know that I'm not going to go hungry. I know that I'm not going to be abandoned. I know that I can put my trust Trust in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We live to give him glory. We live to give him honor. And one thing I want to leave, leave with you today as I'm getting ready to finish, you know, in all this, we can get distracted and we can get a little, we can get a little pushed off of our, our base. We get a little we can get a little nervous and a little bit worried and we can lose our focus. But what does God want from us? What does God ask of us? Well, the, the, the most basic things that I could think of is we live, number one, to give God a glory. We live to serve others and we also live to share the truth. Those are the, the three basic things that that I, I wrote down that God wants us to do. We live to give God glory, we live to serve, and we live to share the truth. Well, I'm learning more and more as I go through the word that the way we glorify God, especially in these times, is the way that we hold on to his word. Obedience is the way to blessing. We can't obey unless we're in the word and we're in his will. I was thinking about people that have conformed over the over the years in the word of God and there are a lot of them and even in our own society there are people that are conforming and doing things against the will of God I started thinking of the people that stood out there was Caleb and Joshua who believed the word of God even when everyone else rejected it there are a lot of people that are rejecting the good news of Christ today, but you and I have to hold on to it. The Bible says that God had promised to give the Israelites uh, the promised land. He promised to give them that new territory. And when they went to go spy on the land, everyone was afraid of the enemies. But there were two. Oh, there were only two that stood up and said, no, we can take this land. God can do it. Can you stand up today and claim with, you, claim with me no matter how bad things look, no matter how sideways things have gotten, I believe that my God is able to bring me out and take me to more promises, to more blessings, to a better job, to a better relationship, to uh, another ministry. We have to stand on that and not conform to the anxiety of our world. And I started thinking about Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were young men that were taken from their country along with, with Daniel. But they didn't change their ways of living, even though they were given new names and given new responsibilities and they were given a new zip code. They did not change the way they worship God. The Bible says that it was time for everyone to fall down and worship the false idol made out of gold. But these three young men said, we will not bow down to this world. We live to serve and honor Jehovah God. And I know that a lot of you right now might be wanting to bow to anxiety and wanting to bow to worry and wanting to bow to uncertainty. But I wonder if you could stand with me today and give God glory and say, God, I'm going to glorify you. I'm going to honor you. I'm not going to conform to society's emotions or to society's rules, but I'm going to give you honor honor and glory I'm going to stand for you the Bible says that God rescued them out of the fiery furnace and even thousands of years later we're still we're still speaking about them and what they did if you will stand for God if you will focus on Christ, if you will focus on his promises, he will bless you. Don't look at everything else going on around you right now. Don't look at what everything else is happening online, but stand on the word of God, set your hope on Jesus, and put your trust in his promises. What does God, what does Jesus promise you? I don't have time to go through all of them in detail, but he promises you life. Once you believe in him, the Bible says, and you put your trust in him, you go from death to life. He promises us peace when we come to him. He promises us rest 
from our work when we come to him. He promises us fruitful lives. He promises us his presence. He promises us life and life in abundance. He offers us eternal security. He tells us that even though we might die in this physical body, we will not taste death. He promises us rewards in, 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 in abundance in the new life when we see him face to face. And so today I'm going to invite you to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Set your hope on him and all that he has for you. Right now I'm going to ask you to pray with me and whatever's going on in your life, I'm going to ask you to turn the volume down on those voices that your heart might be hearing or your mind might be experiencing and just shut them off a little bit. And I want you to focus on Jesus. I want you to focus on him that was able to calm the storm and to calm the waves and the sea. I want you to focus on the one that rose again from, from death, that rose from the tomb. I want you to focus on him, the one that rose again to heaven, but also is with us today in his, in, 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 through the Holy Spirit, he's with us. I want you to focus on him. And I want you to lift up your hands if you are able to do so right now. And I want you to call on that name, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, right now, Heavenly Father, I invite you, Lord, we invite you into every household, into every room, into every square inch, my God, of our heart and our soul. And right now, Lord, there could be someone that is really struggling, my God, because of a job loss, because of an addiction, Lord, because, Lord God, of anxiety, because of a health situation. And I ask you, Lord God, that you give them a sober mind and alertness and that they might, not, and they might be able, Lord, to focus on you, Jesus Christ. And they might be able to believe that you are Lord, believe that you are Savior, and that they might want to obey your word. Would you speak to right now and just say, Jesus, right now, I believe that you are Lord and I believe that you are Savior. I believe, Lord God, that I am not able to do this thing on my own, but I believe that you can. And Lord Jesus, Jesus, I know, right, like God, that these things are too heavy for me to carry, so I give them to you. Won't you give them to him right now? Give those problems to God. Say, Jesus, I give these problems to you. I give these frustrations to you. I give my God all my fear to you, and I thank you, Lord, for your promises. Come on, just say, Jesus, I thank you for your promises. I thank you for your life. I thank you for your resurrection. I thank you for your joy. And I believe that God is blessing someone right there in their home. Someone is standing up and lifting up their hands and glorifying God. Right now, someone is saying, I can, be, I can feel a refreshing move going on in my heart and my soul. I want to know you, Lord. I want to obey your word. I want to see you again, Jesus. In Jesus' name, heal those that are sick. Help those that are in need, whatever that need is, and may we see each other very soon once again. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. Amen. We're going to turn this over to Dr. Leo Maffei, our assistant pastor, and I also want to thank those that were able to pray last night uh, into the morning. I want to thank, uh, and we had a lot of brothers this time, which is fine, which is awesome, but we also we had Priscilla, Brian, Daniel, Timothy, Rafa, Samantha, Calderon, Jair, Caleb. We had uh, Kaylin and Eric. And the last two weeks, by the grace of God, we've actually been having more young men on the list than, than more ladies, which is which is fine. We, we'll take either one. But the young men have started to step up, and we're so thankful. Thank you to Natalie and Janelle and, uh, and to every other sister that prayed the last few weeks. God bless you. We love you guys. With us now, Dr. Maffei, God bless you. Hermanos, paz de Cristo, praise the Lord, everyone. We are so thankful, amen, for God's word. We're thankful to the Lord for his comfort, for his strength. Every single Sunday, the Lord just, he, in every single day, he pours out his presence, his spirit, his joy. The Bible says, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And the, and the psalmist goes on to talk about all the benefits, all the blessings that God has given us, beginning with salvation, beginning, uh, going on to the healing of our souls, going on to the Lord that crowns us with loving kindness and his tender mercies. La palabra de Dios dice, bendice alma mía Jehová y bendiga todo mi ser su santo nombre. Bendice alma mía Jehová y no olvides 
ninguno de sus beneficios. El que perdona todas tus iniquidades, el que sana todas tus dolencias, el que te rescata tu vida del hoyo y también el que te corona con favores y también con sus misericordias. Cuántas hermosas bendiciones el Señor ha dado a nosotros. How many beautiful blessings that God has given to us. And so the word of God, God is encouraging us this week. El, el Señor nos está dando, hermanos, uh, ánimo y consejo que nosotros reunimos esta semana todos los días en oración Hallelujah. the God is counseling us and saying you know what come together and just give thanks just give praise just go into worship just begin to bless the Lord empezamos a bendecir a Jehová con todo que está adentro de nosotros y reunirnos con nuestras familias to get together with our children to get together with our wife Amen. And, and that altar, that call to build our altar at home. Ese llamado para construir un altar en la casa, hermanos, es algo que está en nuestro corazón, en el corazón del pastor, hermanos, y especialmente en el corazón de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. It's God's calling us, families, to build that altar throughout the week with your children and pray with them, hold them, uh, cry with them, give thanks to God for them. Um, we are also uh, uh, thankful to God for all of the blessings um, and, and also that he sustains us. And we're thankful to God that he also gives us everything that we have so that we can continue to give. Damos gracias al Señor, hermanos, um, que Él nos ha dado todo y también nos ha dado el poder para dar. Y yo sé que esto es el tie un tiempo muy difícil, pero vamos a con continuar dando porque el Señor, hermanos, Él es fiel. God is faithful. God is true to His word. God is true to His promises. Y nomás eh, queremos uh, a exhortar a todos los hermanos si quieren dar de sus diezmos y no saben cómo, nomás pueden mandar un texto directamente al pastor. Su nombre, su número, disculpe, es área 949-882-8855. So if you would like to uh, give your tithes, we encourage you to go on to the Venmo app. Or if you want to contact one of us or the pastor, please, please uh, go ahead and do so. We also want to encourage everyone to continue to select one day to fast. Todos los hermanos, hermanas, vamos a continuar escogiendo por lo mínimo un día por semana para ayunar. Vamos a continuar orando como un pueblo unido, like one um, church that's united in the Lord Jesus Christ. God is our victory. God is our strength. Amen. He's going to help us to continue moving forward. Moving forward. There was a, a, a brother last week that, that, that hadn't been to church in months, and he said, you know, I, I hope that things can go back to normal. But this particular brother, um, every single week, we've been going over God's word, and he's been, thank you, Jesus, and into, into prayer. And I said, brother, I said, you know, we might not want things go go back to normal. Amen. Just like uh, uh, our youth pastor said that this is a time to be alert. This is a time that we are being awakened. This is the time that God is calling us to prayer, to get in our knees, to, to make sure that we are spending quality and amazing time with the Lord and getting into his word. Um, I also want to congratulate our, the graduates that were mentioned today, um, Brother Brian and Sister Priscilla, um, that were little ch children when they came into my class. I ran into your Bible study notes not too long ago. I've had them in storage, so when I see, the, see, see them, uh, see, uh, see you again, I'd love to pass them on to you. Gracias, hermanos, por su atención. Y vamos a entrar en oración una vez más. Y en esta oración también vamos a mencionar a los que están sufriendo. Hay algunos hermanos que están enfermos, como el hermano Daniel Rodríguez. We're going to pray also for Brother Dan Rodríguez y todos nuestros um, um, hermanos, amigos, vecinos que están enfermos. También los hermanos que están en necesidad. Um, hablé con una hermana uh, recientemente que me dijo que en vez de cinco días a la semana, solamente está trabajando dos días a la semana. 
Y pregunté a la hermana, hermana, ¿tiene suficiente para comer, para vivir? Ella me dijo, sí, gracias a Dios. El, 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 el Señor es nuestro proveedor. Pero queremos levantar a nuestros hermanos en oración y, 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 y dar gracias a Dios porque Él está con nosotros. Cristo Jesús, te adoramos, Señor. Te exaltamos, Señor. Una vez más, Señor, estamos agradecidos. Oh, aleluya, bendecir tu nombre con todas nuestras almas, con todas nuestras vidas, Señor. Aleluya, por, por todo que tú eres y todo que tú haces y todo que estás haciendo, Señor. We give you praise and honor and glory for all that you're doing. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y gracias, Señor, por tu palabra que ha pasado, Señor, de este, de, 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 aleluya, de este lugar a los corazones. De tu corazón, Señor, a los que están escuchando tu palabra, Señor. Haga una transforma, transformación. Aleluya, que yo puedo recibir salvación en sus vidas. Gracias, Señor, porque tú eres nuestro proveedor. Porque tú eres nuestro sanador. Presentamos a nuestros hermanos manos y amigos que están enfermos que tú puedes poner tu a tu mano aleluya milagrosa sobre ellos en este momento que yo reciban una sanidad completa en el poderoso nombre de cristo jesús también presentamos a nuestros hermanos que están en necesidad financiera señor aleluya tú señor eres aleluya que pro, el proveedor de todas las cosas que tú vas a transformar tú vas a mejorar aleluya Aleluya, esa situación en el poderoso nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén, amén. Allí donde estén, hermanos, dan un aplauso, aplauso a la honra y la gloria del Señor. Aleluya, amén y amén y amén. Dios les bendiga, hermanos.